Stem cells are considered to be useful to developing many different tissues in the human body. And the idea is that one stem cell can develop into either many other different types of stem cells or into mature tissues such as brain tissues or liver tissues. Stem cells can be sourced from a number of different places. Embryonic stem cells from developing embryos, cord blood from umbilical cord blood. Also, you can get them from organ-based systems such as bone marrow or indeed different organs such as adipose fat tissues. Of course, the different ways to access them can be hard or difficult uh, or can actually move right through to being very easy, like such as umbilical cord blood where there's no ethical problems at all. There are many advantages and disadvantages depending on the source of stem cells that you choose. Very few people have access to human embryonic stem cells. At best estimates, there's between four to 500 embryonic stem cell lines across the world. Uh, however, there are 130 million children born every year, which means that the best and easiest source of cord is cord blood stem cells, which are taken from the newborn baby. It is considered that different sources of stem cells have advantages and disadvantages and different stem cell sources may be able to develop into more tissues than others. It is considered in the laboratory that embryonic stem cells can grow into many different tissues although the evidence for this is very weak uh, whereas the cord blood stem cells can so far produce 20 or 25 different organ-based tissues. So the, there is a great deal more research that needs to be done as to which stem cells will be most useful in developing the most different tissue types. But for me, I think what is important is which can actually help the patients and how soon can we get them into the patients. We must make a very clear decision as to which stem cells are the best to use for patients. We have to distinguish very clearly between laboratory research and what can actually be carried out on patients. It is not possible to transplant any stem cell unless it is specifically tissue typed to the patient it is going to go into. Embryonic stem cells have the tissue type of the embryo that they would have come from and therefore if you don't have that tissue type you cannot transplant that embryonic stem cell line into you. For that reason we believe the way forward for transplanting stem cells is to use adult based stem cells or stem cells from umbilical cord blood from which you can more likely find a tissue type for you. Embryonic stem cells growing in the laboratory also have major disadvantages in that if you grow them for over two to three months, they have major karyotypic and genetic changes, which means that they would be then potentially dangerous in terms of transforming into tissues uncontrollably and also in terms of cancer. For that reason, we believe the safest way forward is adult stem cell therapies. But a word of caution for all patients, even those are potentially quite far away in reality from day-to-day -day transplant. Some people are suggesting that embryonic stem cells would be useful, some are suggesting that animal-human hybrids would be useful, some are saying that genetically modified cells such as the so-called IPS cells of Professor Yamanaka in Japan, and some people are saying cord blood or bone marrow. We have to make a decision about which are the right to use, but I think what's the best thing to do is to distinguish scientifically as to what is transplantable. Animal-human hybrids would not be transplantable for exactly the same reasons as any other manipulated cell in the human system because if you have manipulated it in any way it is unlikely to be controllable and you could potentially cause problems. It's exactly the same problem with the IPS cells of Professor Yamanaka because they have been transformed with retroviruses which cannot be controlled in the human system very easily and therefore you could potentially make the patient more sick. So it's considered that the best possible route for intervention with stem cells Cells is something called minimal manipulation and that means harvesting stem cells, transforming them as quickly as possible into what you need and then injecting them as quickly as possible and this is the only way that we consider that governments will give a license for this work to go forward. I think that 
we have a big potential for stem cells to get into people in certain areas, particularly children's diseases. But very complex diseases require more research to actually understand how they take place. Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, these are all complex human conditions. And until we understand a great deal more about how they actually operate in the body, how can we possibly be expected to cure them? I don't think it's reasonable to think that any stem cell source, no matter what it is, is going to easily overcome these human conditions. But things like umbilical cord blood, which were only transplanted for the first time about 20 years ago, uh, have made an amazing contribution towards therapies. There are now over 85 conditions treatable or supportable with cord blood. And that includes a very exciting trial in Florida, regulated by the human go uh, American government, using human umbilical cord blood to treat type 1 diabetes. It's not a cure, but it's a support. We're also seeing very exciting trials in America, using cord blood to treat metabolic brain diseases in children, also cerebral palsy. Again, not necessarily total cures, but a potential support which is better than the current uh, accepted treatments. So while we have a long way to go, there is much excitement. Stem cell science cannot have any credibility if it overhypes stem cells for the future. We have to have a degree of reality that this is a very young science. And we must learn from other medical therapies such as gene therapy, which has had a very, very long and rocky road into the clinic, that this isn't going to be easy. We must be honest with patients particularly, that if it's not ready for them, we shouldn't be suggesting it for them. We should try to make sure that people are not travelling abroad to unregulated clinics uh, on the basis of the hype that they read in newspapers because there are some people out there who don't care about the reality and will try to rip them off. We have to most of all not give people false hope and we must be honest.